Hi, this is John Fallows, VE6EY, with an introduction to the GNU Radio Toolkit, or GNU Radio as it's called. It's a toolkit for developing digital signal processing uh, or software to find radio. And uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now is an FM receiver that I scripted in GNU Radio. And right now I'm listening to a local CBC FM station on 102.5 megahertz. And in the top graph, you can see the spectrum display, uh, two, two megahertz of sampling band paths on my local FM band. And in the bottom uh, screen of the screen, you can see a uh, demodulation uh, graph showing uh, the signal that's coming out of the radio receiver. And it's a typical FM signal. Uh, you've got the mono uh, signal uh, in the first 15 kilohertz of the demodulated output. Uh, you've got the 19 kilohertz pilot tone. You've got the stereo component uh, around 30 megahertz wide. Uh, you've got the RDS data that's showing up. And then you've got some subcarrier information further out. So this receiver was built in a few minutes just simply writing a script in this GNU radio tool. And I'm going to show you now how to do something like this very quickly and easily. And uh, I call this uh, program the Hello World program for GNU radio. Because virtually everybody who downloads and installs uh, GNU radio will have an RTL SDR uh, um, stick or a software-defined receiver dongle. And uh, the one thing you can do very quickly as your first project is to write an FM radio in Software Defined Radio. And I call this Hello World because when you're writing software, typically when you're learning a new program, one of the first things you learn how to do is to get your program to actually print something on the screen. And typically that's Hello World. So <laughs> this is the Hello World program for GNU Radio. Anybody with the uh, software installed and uh, and an RTL SDR stick can get this program up and running in a few minutes. So this whole uh, framework is actually a bunch of modules written in C++ that do all kinds of signal processing and signal generation, and, and we'll, we'll show you what those blocks are. And all of the blocks installed in GNU Radio uh, show up at the side. For example, you've got a selection of filters. You can do bandpass filters. FFT filters, high pass, low pass, uh, and so on. And basically, with GNU Radio Companion, which is the uh, top layer that sits on top of all these blocks, you can just build a radio on the screen by connecting blocks together, which is what I've done here to uh, put together an FM receiver. So all of this software in the GNU Radio Companion runs in Python, and these scripts uh, automatically are generated by the graph that you put together on the screen. And the scripts will then run the C++ modules connected together. And you can build a receiver. <laughs> just like that. No soldering. You just uh, basically, if you've got the IQ data coming in from an RTL SDR, which costs around 20 bucks, then all the rest of this is stuff you can do for free. And uh, GNU Radio has been around 15 to 17 years, uh, and the GNU Radio Companion has been around for about 10 years. And uh, this is originally a Linux project. Uh, what I'm using is a version that's been ported to Windows, so you can run it on Windows. Uh, there's extra features and more things you can do if you're running in Linux. Uh, there is reasonable documentation for, for this framework. Uh, it's not great, uh, but basically it, it's more in line with the kind of documentation you get for most Linux projects, which are for people who are fairly advanced in how that operating system and its various tools work. Okay, enough talking. So when you're going to build a, your Hello World project, your FM receiver, every program you create in uh, GRU Companion uh, we'll start off with an options block, and the options block basically is the top level where you define your project. You give it a name, in my case, FM Receiver. And one thing that's really important in this block is selecting what kind of GUI you want to use. There's two sets of widgets that are available in, uh, in these projects. One is the QT GUI, one is the WX GUI, which is more Windows-oriented. And you can choose either one. 
but you need to choose that in your top level block because you're only allowed to use one or the other types of GUI in your project. So there's the, uh, there's the top level block. Typically what you do next is you create uh, whatever kind of variables or constants you might want to use in your program. So for example, I created the variable called sample rate, uh, which is 2 million or 2 e to the power of 6, which is uh, notation, scientific notation. And I want to run my software defined receiver with a 2 mega samples per second rate, so I can capture 2 megahertz worth of the uh, FM bandwidth. So that's set up first. Then I want to do some downsampling, uh, and in this case I want to downsample that uh, by 8 times, or get it down to 250,000 cycles per second, which is where I'll do my processing and final display. And one of the reasons why I chose 250,000 was so I can show, uh, once I get from complex data to real data, I want to be able to show 125,000 kilohertz of the FM band that I'm demodulating. So that's how you set that up. And so a lot of these blocks uh, will have, um, they will have uh, things called uh, documentation built into the, to the proper, or the, the edit box. And uh, some, of the, some of the documentation is pretty meager, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, so having set up those two variables, um, you probably noticed in the, in the program when it was running before, I had a slider for RF gain, a slider for volume gain, and a chooser for choosing from different stations. So for the RF gain of the receiver, this slider, which shows up on the screen as a sliding control uh, that I've created, basically gives me a number between 10 and 70 with a default value of 15. So in this case, uh, I'm going to add about uh, either 10 to 70 dB of gain in the RF side of the software-defined radio. I'm going to display that uh, slider horizontally. And more advanced, you can actually get into setting up where on the display you want it to appear. And in this case, I want this control to show up in the first row, uh, rather the second row, uh, which is row one, uh, the first column, which is column zero. And then I want to stretch it one column high and four, or rather one row high and four columns wide. So you can get into the documentation, which tells you how to set up uh, your display. So that's my RF gain control. Next, I want to have a volume control. And the volume control is quite similar, but it runs from 0 to 100. And uh, it's again horizontal. And it shows up actually just to the right of the, uh, of the uh, RX gain control. So that, those are those two things. Then I want to choose some stations. And uh, there's various ways I can tune my receiver. What I just decided to do was to set up four fixed stations. I picked uh, four stations from our selection of local radio, FM radio in Calgary. I put each of their frequencies and then each of their names in. And these will show up as radio buttons. And by clicking on the button, it will, uh, it will select the station I want to listen to. So that's pretty simple. So we've started off with some variables on sampling rate. And, uh, and then some controls for the interface to control volume, RF gain, and select the station. So now we get to the interesting part. This is all GUI stuff and variables, constants. Now we're going to actually get to, uh, to the uh, radio itself. We can connect GNU Radio to the RTLSDR through a simple source code block. And uh, there are a few code blocks built in for sourcing various kinds of radios. The easiest one to get started with is just the RTLSDR. So in this case, I've assigned my variable samp rate to the sampling rate. Remember, we previously defined that as, uh, as 2 megahertz, or 2 million samples per second. I want the uh, frequency of the receiver to follow the, one of the four FM stations. So my, my GUI is called chooser, uh, tuner, and the tuner value will just change the frequency. Uh, and I've got the RF gain slider control set up to vary the RF gain of, uh, of the radio. So the rest of these are just set to automatic, and we're not going to do anything with them. But basically, 
when the program runs, this source for RTLSDR <clears throat> will start the radio, connect to it, run it at the right sample rate and tune frequency, and apply the amount of RF gain that we want. Okay, so now I've got a radio producing 2 million IQ samples per second, and when the connection blocks are blue, that means it's a complex number coming out. So one of the things I want to do is just display the 2 megahertz of the FM band that I'm li uh, listening to, and I've got a FFT sync. This is just something that gives you a user interface FFT. And I'm calling this one the sampling bandpass. It runs at the sample rate. It tracks whatever station I'm tuned to. It puts it in the center. And I've just left all the rest of it here. Yeah, so basically, this is what gives me that sort of band spectrum display. And all I had to do was to really apply a couple of variables. I've just left the rest on default values. Okay, so we got these 2 million samples per second coming out. I don't want to actually work with that many samples. I want to decimate by 8, or I want to reduce the number of samples by 8 and do my work at 250,000 samples per second. It's easier on the computer, and it's good enough for what I'm doing. So you can then create and connect a low-pass filter to the output from the radio. And what this output... Uh, from the radio does is the decimation, which simply means I'm throwing away uh, most of the data but keeping one eighth of it. In this case, I'm having it calculate the decimation by the sample rate divided by the down rate, which I defined earlier, which gives me a decimation rate of eight, and I want to get that into an integer, so I've just done that. Uh, and I'm doing a bit of gain on this. I'm doing uh, multiplying the data by two to increase the gain. That's like an IF amp in a radio. Uh, the sampling rate is my overall samp rate that I defined earlier. The cutoff frequency is 100 kilohertz. So I basically just want to work on 100 kilohertz of each station signal, which is all I need. And the transition width is how fast that uh, filter will cut off once it reaches the low-pass boundary. And, and I've got that set up too. And basically... Um, all you need to do is just define these variables, in which case it's a complex number decimating low-pass filter, simple to set up, bit of amplification, and this will give me the selectivity in my radio. So that's all set up and ready to go. So once I've decimated or downsampled from my radio, I'm setting it up to a receiver. And in GNU radio, there's something called a wideband FM receiver, and I've got this set up to run at 250,000 samples per second. And I'm not doing any audio decimation. That's basically all I'm doing. And this will demodulate the FM signal and give me that. And I'll be able to do two things with it. I'll be able to display it and also listen to it on the computer. So to display what's coming out now of that, uh, of that receiver, I've set up another... Uh, sync device for an FFT just running at the down rate or 250,000 samples per second. It's zeroed in on the baseband frequency of, of uh, zero. And this will just simply show uh, a Fourier spectrum of the data coming out of the demodulator. Okay, almost done. Uh, the other thing I want to do is actually listen to the station. So I've got to decide what audio rate I want to come out of my computer speakers. And in my case for this project, I just defined that as 24 kilohertz. So I've got 250,000 kilohertz coming out of the receiver. I'm using a rational resampler to get that to the 24 kilohertz. So what this does is it just divides the 250,000 kilohertz by 250 to get down to one kilohertz, and then interpolates or multiplies that back up to 24. So it's a very simple filter, and here I've switched to real taps to floating point numbers. I'm not using complex data anymore coming out of this receiver or the resampler. Okay, so it would be nice to have a volume control. So I've created this constant here, uh, which is triggered by my GUI slider for volume, and it takes the number from the GUI slider for volume, which would be between 0 and 100, and it divides that by 100. So basically I've got a a floating point number coming out of here between 0 and 1 that will drive the volume for my uh, 
my audio. And lastly, I'm going to hook up an audio sync. An audio sync simply connects uh, your script to your speakers. And so I am just left this on the default. I've set the uh, sample rate to 24 kilohertz. And this will play the audio. And so once again, just to go through what I've done, the radio is going to provide 2 megahertz of data. This will be uh, divided down 8 times to get me to 250 kilohertz of data, which is where I'll actually do the receiving. After the receiver, I translate the output to audio level. And so to run that script, I just push one button, and this will create the receiver. Pop up in a minute. This is actually a Python script that has to run, and this is a window created by Python. You can see here's my uh, where's my here's my volume control. We'll go to CBC. It's a bit more gentle music. <laughs> so there again, the four station selections, and each time I click one of these buttons, it changes the frequency. And I don't need much gain on the RF side because this is local FM and, you know, 15, 10, 15 dB of gain is plenty enough. I could crank it up, but no need to. And then the sampling bandpass, which is centered on the frequency for the station, which in this case is, I think, 102.1. And you can see there's another station above it and another station below it. And you can see the picture change as you move around the band and capture different parts of it. Then coming out of the demodulator, the, as I mentioned before, <coughs> this is what actually an FM signal from one of your local FM stations looks like. The first chunk is mono audio. Then there's a 19 kilohertz pilot tone. Then the stereo, left minus right, with an invisible subcarrier in the middle. Then you'll get the RDS data, which shows up at around 57 kilohertz. And then depending on what else the station does, you might get various subcarriers writing above that. Uh, different stations use different features, but they pretty well all have the uh, RDS showing up these days. They all have the 19 kilohertz, and they all have the, the mono and stereo bandwidth. You'll find that in any station. So there's my receiver. Uh, there again, written in uh, in Python and C++, and I didn't have to actually write any code because I was just able to draw this graph and create this very first software-defined radio using my RTL dongle. This is the Hello World project. This is the project virtually everybody does first when they start to run GNU Radio. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm going to do another video showing an AM receiver which is a little bit more work, but we'll get to that shortly. Thank you very much.